A career in data is a lot like training for the Olympics. You win an Olympic gold by doing the basics right and doing them over and over again. And today we'll uncover the fundamental strategies that create a successful data leader and data career. Because joining us today is Miltiadis Sarakinos, the head of data analytics at Bank Claire. Now, having built up his data skills over many years, he shares fundamental strategies that can lead you to data excellence, both in your team and in your career. So learn how you can move your data career forward on today's episode of Data Team Success with me, Ross Webb, brought to you in partnership with our friends at Amplitude. Now, coming up in today's episode, integrating data culture, overcoming data literacy challenges, career success in data, effective team management, and feedback and self-improvement. Miltiadis, you've worked in both scientific and business environments. How has your experience shaped your view on establishing a strong data culture and what key insights can our audience learn from your journey? Of course, when you are in science or in an environment like CERN, everybody is a geek. So geeks speak to geeks. Uh, and geeks speak the same language and they understand one another very well. The problem begins when you move into the private sector or some uh, business function. And then, of course, uh, geeks tend to be lonely freaks within an organization. And the whole idea, of course, this has been evolving with time, uh, but the whole idea is that uh, the people who work with data are not an isolated, uh, maybe with high technical skill uh, entity, but they start to spread the word, the culture, the things that they are doing to the entire organization in order to have it. So, yes, let's start with the, with the word culture, you know, the the saying of Peter Drucker, culture is strategy for breakfast. So we try to establish some kind of data culture in the organization, meaning that people can understand data, can understand the results of data, but can also do things with data at their own skin level. Huh? Uh, there's another saying I heard in an event actually in London when I was in the autumn. Uh, every company, and not only there, every company nowadays would be a data and AI so the whole idea is to establish data culture in the sense that people understand data, they like to play with data, and they are in a position to absorb data insights and data results into actionable practice. And uh, our identity, our unit, we are, called, we are data analytics. We are called data analytics. We are a unit of six persons at the moment uh, is trying to promote this culture in the sense that we are doing everything possible to drive decisions based on data results, but also to enable everybody who wants to work with data to do things himself. And uh, to this end, we have created also small programs of uh, uh, mini courses, internal courses, or we guide people to what other courses they should take in order to work with data. And uh, data culture is, is not so simple because it requires that a lot of units will come out of their comfort zone. It requires that people will start to do things a bit differently. But I think we are in a very good track if we compare to what I've known at other, or what I see, what I hear at other organizations. We are very well positioned and it's moving in the right direction. Promoting data literacy can be a complex challenge. Now, what are some of the biggest hurdles you faced in ensuring data literacy across an organization and how have you successfully overcome these challenges? One thing that can go wrong is magnificent data results, uh, data pro analytics, data and analytics products that only the producers understand and can enjoy. So the challenge here, I'm not saying it's wrong, but the challenge here is how do you take the result all the way down to the business and create impact? Because uh, we produce something, we deliver it, Maybe the, the person who receives it understands it and um, likes it, but then he has to move further along the chain in order to create impact. And somewhere all the way in this chain, it gets lost and uh, actually it stays there where it is. Huh? For example, we may create a magnificent dashboard, 
But uh, some people look at it, and if you check uh, what happens uh, one year later, it's not that it's getting daily views from the entire organization, or even though it looks fantastic and it's very nice. So that's this is this is one thing. It's not data culture going wrong. I would say it's insufficient data culture. It hasn't established itself in all the processes. Uh, the other thing that can go very wrong uh, is when the data team, the analytics team, becomes an ETL team due to the skill of um, tackling with data, being able to retrieve data and manipulate and combine and reshape uh, that uh, many units begin to place orders of data deliveries in form of flat files of access to the data team in order to do the rest of the of the work themselves so this is something uh, this is a development uh, this is something that can really go wrong and establish uh, the wrong culture meaning the analytics, the data team becomes a data delivery team and the whole data work is done in uh, very, let's say, old-fashioned traditional tools like Excel. And that has, the result of this is that, of course, you are limited by what uh, this tool can offer, by what Excel can offer. And there is no motivation for uh, the other people to increase their skills. So let's say, how do you go about it? You refuse to do it. You need line uh, support from the entire management. You refuse to do it, and you say, if you want data, learn how to extract data from the database with modern methods. Program. We give you access, but we are not going to do the job, your the work for you. And this is something that's working, that works, and it makes people try to build up their skills and then see the value of. Uh, being able to extract data with SQL and be able to create themselves nice visualizations, et cetera, et cetera, out, outside of the very traditional uh, instruments of Microsoft Office. Um, the other things that can go wrong is maybe in data management. Um, there, data management of the whole process. One has to understand the whole data thing is not a project. It's not one big thing that you have to arrive to. It's a journey, it's an agile process, and it's evolving the whole time. So the big mistake that you can do is, uh, let's say, ah, let's uh, let's draw exactly, let's define exactly on paper what we want to do and where we want to be in five years, make a detailed plan, uh, and uh, specify every screw where it would be, every everything, and then we start to do it as a big project. This makes no sense. This is very agile technology is evolving very fast. So the thing you have to do is have some targets, start to build it, reap benefits, adapt to conditions, changing business requirements, changing technologies, changing mentalities, and always just see what's the best that you can do for the for the, the situation, given what exists on the market and what is required at the moment. Moving on to a career in data. Now, what advice would you give someone looking to develop a successful career in the data field? Data skill, an AI skill coming now, will be used more and more. Uh, so, uh, let's say from the, let's start the, first from the organization point of view, I, I believe that uh, actual data functions in uh, organizations will not be a centralized team serving everybody, uh, but it would, there will be a center of excellence and there will be many satellite teams. Uh, organizations which support one another, each one at its own skin level required by the, the job that they have to fulfill. So everybody who wants to do this should first decide how to position himself. Do I want to become a full-scale data scientist or data engineer? And then the idea is the following. Learn the basic stuff. Well, the, the open source, I, everybody has to learn Python. Do the thing. For, go with the trend. So, for example, Python is now in the trend. In the past, there were different languages. There were different things. But learn the major stuff. Uh, look at uh, job offers and look what they require. 
uh, that's how, what we do also when we decide about our instruments and about our job postings. If you see the job postings, you look in Switzerland, of course. I monitor them all the time because I get them also. Uh, they require 20%, they all require the same stuff. So learn this stuff. Get some data sets and do dirty work, hands-on work on your computer. So, uh, For example, uh, there are many online courses which are very good. There are platforms which are very affordable. Again, I will not mention names where you can do, but there you go and you edit some program in the web because, of course, it has to work very fast so you can proceed. It's nice to learn, but what you need is do dirty work on your computer, uh, fight a little bit, uh, have bugs, have mistakes, correct them. And uh, just go the, along this process until you get your first job. And then one has to realize that technical skill is one thing, but the job of a data person is 50% a marketing job. I'm saying this now, it's very easy, but I tend to forget it myself. It's a marketing job. Everything you do, you have to market it. You have stakeholders uh, until everybody else in the company becomes able to program and understand uh, everything that you understand, which will never be the case. You have to market it in a different way. So also proceed into developing this other type of skills of being able to explain uh, uh, something very sophisticated to not technical people in two or three lines uh, uh, first. And this is another skill that one has to build. One has to realize again that not everybody uh, has the same level of math or technical understanding and one has to talk to people who may also be skeptical or who may feel a little bit uh, under pressure to leave their comfort zone. So these are all skills that somebody has to develop. The other thing for a data leader is to understand that also everybody in a team uh, we have his own way of work, but we also tend to reinvent the wheel. <coughs> so we also, we are very often that uh, somebody does something like this, the other person does the same thing in a different way. And uh, it's something that one has to try to consolidate and uh, on one hand, don't take away the initiative and the personal creativity. On the other hand, have some standards. So when a person leaves, when a person is not there, uh, that the others can jump in and uh, fill in the gap. And uh, the other thing is don't think, always think that what you know is not enough. Uh, what you know is just a small part of what is possible to know of what you will need later. And be in be your entire life, be a student. So let's say I have reached an age and a stage where I could retire tomorrow if I wanted, but I still feel myself a student. Part of me feels like a student and I feel it's my duty to watch new things, to do some courses, to take some certificates, just, just to see things that are new or they exist but I wasn't aware of. I just have to learn and learn and round my profile. So, One of the biggest challenges that people actually face when applying the principles and strategies that you've described beyond just, uh, let's say, marketing aspects. One challenge is remember who your audience is, who will get it. The other thing is be able to do an 80-20 job. So you will, ne you will never get uh, anything you do, you will never get it perfect. It's a little bit the, the challenge that uh, people coming from uh, science, like a person, uh, for example, some research facility like CERN, where people do data analysis, and you have to get it to the 10th decimal point because that's, that's the, the new science, that you got the decimal point correct, and now you can can explain the universe because of this 10th decimal point. That's not how business works. You come uh, to, to a business sector from such a culture, it takes a moment to adapt and not try to get the perfect result first before you communicate it. You have to be able to do 80-20 and see, okay, the result is good enough. I'll communicate and see what happens, and then I can improve it later if I need in order to, to be able to be to, to resist perfectionism. That's one challenge. On the other hand, 
you need to have some way of not doing, not being chaotic. Another thing that can happen is now I do this. And then something, another nice thing comes and, okay, now I do this. And then another thing comes, ah, okay, now I do this. So you may have many interesting things that you are doing. Uh, you don't need to get something perfect, but on the other hand, you need to go to this 80, 90% in order to deliver it, in order to do something else. Don't try to follow 10 different projects at the same time, which are all very cool, but you never end up, you never arrive to some good point with any of them because you are doing something else. Oh, I haven't finished A, you know, I also have B. And then, oh, I haven't finished B because I have A, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, a, this is the major things that happen when you are coming in. That's really great. So you've got to try something, learn, improve, iterate, improve, improve, and improve. And as we wrap up, is there one last final piece of advice that you can offer and share to our awesome audience? And become data-driven yourself. So uh, collect the data about yourself, how do people criticize you, what they tell you about it, and try to be objective. Don't, don't try to be defensive and uh, justify yourself. Just become great data-driven and fact-driven yourself. Just nobody, nobody can listen to yourself when you're criticizing yourself. You are not embarrassed. You're just doing it yourself. And improving is not an embarrassment. It's a strength. Now, with these insights, you're ready to train like an Olympian and achieve data-driven career success. And you can follow Miltiades and his work on LinkedIn. And if you enjoyed this discussion and are ready for more data-driven insights, don't miss this episode with Amruta Shankar on a path to data enlightenment. Now, thank you so much for watching. And this episode was brought to you by me, Ross Webb, and in partnership with our friends at Amplitude. Until next time, bye for now.